Do you find it harder to get a high score on the listening test than on reading? I personally think so. My highest score on reading is nine versus eight point five on listening. I got eight point five three times on the listening test, and I think listening is harder because it not only tests our listening skills but also tests our reading skills. It's testing two skills at once. That's why it's so hard. Imagine two people with the same level of listening skills, but one of them is very good at reading those questions and options. When listening to the recordings, he knows exactly what kind of information he's looking for, whereas the other person can't even finish reading all the questions. Who will get a higher score? Of course, the one with better reading skills will get a higher score, right? This is exactly why I was able to get 8.5 three times. On listening, I think my biggest advantage is that I am able to read part two and part three two times before the recordings started to play. So why would I read part two and part three two times and not part one and part four two times? As you can see, part two and part three are where we get multiple choice questions, and for this type of question, there is really a lot of information to read. We need to read all the questions. We also need to read all those options. And I think the more information we need to deal with, the better we need to know it. Not knowing the questions and options very well prevents me from. Getting a correct answer. That's why I always try to read the questions in part two and part three twice. However, as you can see, in part one and part four, there just isn't a lot of information we need to read. So for me, reading those questions in part one and part four once is enough. Now I'm going to show you how I am able to read part two and three two times. So after I click start test, I wouldn't start reading part one. I will use the navigation bar at the bottom of the screen to take me directly to part two. That is to say, when the recording says part one, you will hear a man inquiring about joining a club. First, you will have some time to look at the questions one to seven. When the recording says this, I will be reading part two. Part one is easy. I don't need so much time to read it. I will just use the time they give us to read part one to read part two. I will read not only the questions but also the options. I think knowing the options will really helps me to choose the correct answers. So my goal is to finish reading these questions and options during the time they give us to read part one. It doesn't matter if I don't finish reading all of them because later in the listening test I will have time to read them again. So in order to finish reading all this information in a very short period of time, I wouldn't highlight keywords. It's just too time-consuming. I do one thing, one thing only, which is reading. So I would read all these questions and options quickly, but not so quickly that I forget them right after I finish reading them. When you practice at home, you need to experiment and find a reading pace that works for you. You need to train yourself to read quickly. You also need to train your memory. You want to retain a rough memory of what you've read. You don't want to completely forget it. So how can you train your memory? You just try to remember the information you've just read. You just try to do this every time, and you will improve. Believe me, practice makes improvement. As you practice, you will be able to read questions faster, and your memory will improve as well. I think with some practice, even if you can't finish reading all these questions and options, at least you can finish reading most of them. This is already a huge advantage. Next, as soon as the recording says, listen carefully and answer the questions one to seven. As soon as I hear it, I will go to part one. So, how should we read part one? As you can see, the first event is a library. Here's the audio script. As you can see, the speakers don't just go ahead and talk about、uh, library at the very beginning of their conversation, right? It takes a few lines to get to the library. I would use this extra few seconds and the time they say listen carefully and answer the questions one to seven. I would use this time to quickly go through question one to seven. Is this even possible? So I wouldn't spend time highlighting keywords. I wouldn't read extra information either. I would just quickly go through these seven blocks. So I know I need to find out two events names. I also need to find out opening time. I also need to find out three fees. It literally only takes a few seconds to go through these seven questions. In terms of the extra information, I would read them when I'm listening. 
I don't think it would be difficult because part one is easy. It's about daily life. Listening while reading is certainly challenging for part two and part three, but I think for part one, it's completely normal. You may think this table is easy. There isn't much information in the table. Let's look at this one, which has more information. First, we need to answer question one to five. As you can see, only two sentences that contain questions are a little bit long. The other three, two, three, and four, are so short. It's totally possible to read these five pieces of information in a few seconds with practice. Remember, practice makes improvement. And I would read the title as well to give myself a rough understanding of what this part is about, since I usually don't listen to the very beginning of the conversation. Now let's go back to this listening test. Let's move on to question A to ten. They will give us time to read question A to ten before the recording. Recording starts to play, right? So we need to choose three events, and as soon as I find all the three answers, I would immediately go to part three and start reading part three. I mean, after you find all the three answers, the conversation probably won't end. They will keep talking for a while, so I will use this time and the time they give us to check the answers in part one to read part three. So why part three and not the second part of part two? The second part of part two is usually matching questions. Matching questions may be difficult, but this type of question doesn't require us to read a lot of information, right? You can see there is only a little information to read. Whereas in part three, there are so many questions and options to read, and I think part three is so hard. It's harder than part four, so I definitely want to read part three twice before、I、start listening. So I will read the questions as well as the. Options. I may be able to read two to three questions. Next, when I hear the recording plays part two, you will hear a man introducing a skin resort to a group of listeners. First, you will have some time to look at questions eleven to sixteen. So when I hear this, I will go to part two and read part two. So this is the second time I read these questions and options. I should be able to develop a stronger memory of them. This gives me a huge advantage because when we are listening, we are also kind of reading. We keep looking at those options and questions, right? If I have a very good understanding of those questions and options, I can do less reading. I'm not saying I don't read them at all when I'm listening. I do. I do read them, but. I can read less and focus more on listening. I think this gives me a huge advantage, especially when I am answering questions like twelve and sixteen, which have relatively long options. I don't want to focus too much on reading those long options when I'm listening. So so far we have been talking about reading skills. What about listening skills? I think if you want to get a very high score, like a band A, A point five or nine in listening, practicing listening questions is not enough. No one get very high score just by practicing else questions. Those who get very high scores must be very active listeners of English content. I think the problem with practicing only else questions is that when you are doing a listening test, you are focusing too much on Finding answers to specific questions instead of getting a general idea of what the speaker is saying. However, your ability to follow through a conversation or a speech is very important because you don't want to get lost when you are listening. So what I did when I was preparing for IELTS was that I listened a lot. I listened to podcasts every single day for like twenty to thirty minutes. I listened to a few shows from the Wall Street Journal. I listened to their tech news briefing. I listened to the journal. I also listen to your morning briefing. I also listen to business words. As you can see, I didn't listen to very superficial stuff. I listen to difficult topics. Those shows talk about very challenging topics, like what a big company do to remain competitive in the market. And I think what's interesting is that I found my listening skills improved dramatically after I listened to this guy Russell Brunson for a while. He speaks so fast. Even native English speakers think he speaks very fast. And after listening to him for a while, I found that the speakers in else listening test talk so so slowly, and I have no problem follow their conversations at all. So listening to difficult topics and listening to English speakers who speak super fast helped me improve my listening skills a lot. 
Take for example question twelve. Why does he love traveling? When the speaker talks about the first and the third options, he watched documentaries as a child. His parents are geographers. So when the speaker talks about these two options, I know they are traps. I know they are not the correct answer. Not because I hear a few words, but because I understand this as a whole. And when the speaker talks about the second option, he's influenced by his parents' passion. I know this is the correct answer, not because I know effect and influence are synonyms, but because I understand this sentence as a whole. Their passion kept affecting me, and eventually, I realized that traveling has been something I love for a long time. I'm not saying listening to details is not important. It's definitely important, especially in part four and part one, where we need to fill in blanks. But your ability to follow through a speech and your ability to get a general idea of what someone is saying is also very important. And these two abilities is not something you can develop by just practicing else questions. So please go to find something you are interested in and listen to them actively every day. You will definitely improve. Now let's move on to questions seventeen to twenty. These are matching questions. I think there shouldn't be any problem for us to read these options twice during the time they give us to read them. I would read them very carefully twice because I want to know them very well. For the locations, I would read them once only. I watched a video from a very big channel. They tell students to do a lot of things during the time、uh, they are reading questions. They even tell students to think of synonyms. For example, here it says "well known." Maybe in the recording, "popular" will be used. I just don't think matching questions are testing our ability to look for synonyms. If I have some time left before the recording starts, I would use this to read part three. This may sound crazy, but this is exactly how I got eight point five three times. I squeeze in time for harder questions. I spend more time reading harder questions than other people do. That's why I got eight point five. Now let's go back to these matching questions. Let's look at question seventeen. I know Lakeside is popular for many years, not because popular and popularity are synonyms, but because I hear this part. Its popularity barely decreases over the years. I hear this whole part and know it just means popular for many years. Matching questions are not testing your ability to look for synonyms, but your ability to understand long sentences. Now let's assume I finished this for matching questions. At the end of part two, they will give us some time to check our answers, right? I will use this time to read part three, using the time at the end of part two and the time they actually give us to read part three. I may be able to read these questions and options carefully, not very carefully, but carefully. So after. After you finish those multiple choices questions, you move on to questions twenty six to thirty. Usually, this part of part three is matching questions again. You just use the time they give you to read those questions, to read those options and the questions twice. If you feel matching questions and multiple choices questions are difficult, apart from practicing them using the questions in Cambridge Out the Box, remember you also need to actively listen to English shows. Now let's move on to part four. I would use a very different strategy to answer the questions in this part. So at the end of part three, we will have some time to check our answers in part three, right? And at the beginning of part four, we will have some time to read the questions in part four. So I will use these two chunks of time to read part four. Of course, we need to read the instruction. I would also read the title, "Sense of Smell," to give myself a general idea of what this article is about. However, I wouldn't read the extra information now. I would read them a little when I'm listening, just to help myself follow through the speech. I would focus on reading those sentences that contain questions. I would read them very carefully. So in part one, I would read questions very quickly, right? But part four is different. Part four is harder. The information around the blank is very important. I want to read them carefully. It will help me find the correct word. 
and I will also try to identify the kind of information I'm looking for. So here it says, less developed in blank than people generally think. If your grammar is okay, you should be able to identify that here we need a noun, right? And here, although some primates, I don't know what primates means, it doesn't matter. Although some primates are able to distinguish blank and this word, I don't know what it means, it's okay, from other types. So I don't know what this word means, but I know I probably need to find an adjective to modify this noun. How do I know it's a noun? Because it should be distinguish something from something, right? So uh, this is a noun, and we need to find an adjective to modify this noun. So because I'm reading carefully, and I'm also analyzing the information, I usually can't finish reading all these 10 questions. It doesn't matter. I usually have two questions I can't finish reading. Uh, it doesn't matter. I will just do some reading while I'm listening. It's not a big deal. Again, if you have trouble answering part four, definitely go to listen to native speakers who speaks fast. If you can follow someone who speaks fast, you can definitely follow through the speech in part four. The speaker really talks very slowly. No people in reality would talk like that. So yeah, this is how I would approach a listening test. So basically, I did two things many people don't do to get high scores on listening test. So apart from practicing the questions in KMJ Out Books, I also listened to a lot of podcasts. I listened to a lot of news podcasts specifically. And this is not enough. I also improved my reading skills. I trained myself to read questions fast and remember information better. That's it for this video. If you enjoy watching it, please give give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon.